Hamilton, the Housing Alliance's Executive Director, to get us started with today's webinar. Thanks, Jen. And hi, everybody. Can you see me and hear me, Jen? Yep, all Great. good. Great. Hi, everybody. You can go to the next slide, Jen. So every election year, it's said that it's the most important election of our lifetimes. And that is sad because it ends up being true. The stakes seem to be getting higher with regard to voter participation, democracy, and for us, making sure that our elected officials are prioritizing affordable housing. People with low incomes and people of color have much, much lower voter participation rates than other socio-demographic groups. So our big goal here is to increase the number of people with lived experience of homelessness, housing instability, and poverty in registering to vote, and then, of course, voting. But in addition to the importance of registering to vote and voting, it turns out that there are other benefits to encouraging the people that you serve to vote. People who vote have stronger social connections. They are more likely to be more involved in the community, whether that's through volunteering or even maybe running for office themselves. And probably the thing that draws me to this is just the sheer power of your organization telling the people that you serve that they matter and that their voices matter. Because we know that people who um, who are poor, who've, who've struggled to afford housing are often told and feel like they just don't matter. So I, to me, that's a really, really important benefit of doing this work. So this is going to be the third election that the Housing Alliance has this initiative to help your organizations engage the people that you're serving in registering to vote and voting. This year, we've been invited to be part of a national pilot with the National Low Income Housing Coalition, where they invited just five states to participate in a greater evaluation of the activities that uh, that work to get people to the polls. Um, the great thing though about this initiative and the work that our local partners have done in previous years is we do have evidence that it has worked. Jen, can you go to the next slide? So in the 2020 election, 19 organizations partnered and reached over 4,600 voters. And through that work, they were able to increase turnout by nine percentage points. And when you looked at the, uh, the group of people that's less likely to vote, it was an even uh, bigger impact with 15 percentage points. So, so we know it's important. We also have evidence that it's working. And what we're gonna talk about today is what the Housing Alliance is gonna provide you if you choose to partner with us um, in this initiative. There are other uh, voter engagement initiatives that you could choose to participate in. This is the only one focused on affordable housing organizations in Pennsylvania. We think we can boost these outcomes even further with more partners. Our goal is to make it easy for you to do this work. And so we hope that um, at the end of uh, our conversation today, that you'll think about uh, joining our 2024 initiative. And with that, I'll pass it back to you, Jen. Thank you so much, Phyllis. Um, so as Phyllis mentioned, uh, we're going to talk a little bit about who we're hoping to engage with this project, why it's important, and what we'll be offering partners and what we're asking of partners in return. So who are we seeking to engage? So there are a number of ways you can decide to participate in this initiative with us. We are looking for any organization that provides affordable housing or homeless services. This could be nonprofits subsidized housing property owner or manager, a housing authority, and I put other 
because maybe there are other types of organization to whom you're affiliated with that aren't included here, like a tenant association, a homeless shelter, social service agencies, and healthcare providers. You can also be another type of service organization outside of the housing and homelessness fields. And you can also be a civic engagement organization. We really wanna partner with all of you to help you engage the people that you are already serving or residents and tenants that are living on your property. So why all of you? So all of the reasons that Phyllis mentioned at the beginning of the presentation are important, but there's a lot of research done by nonprofit votes that shows that people are more likely to participate in voting when they are contacted by somebody that they know. So rather than focusing on impersonal handouts, mass emails, it's important to look for opportunities to initiate these conversations about voting when delivering services, at a community event, on the phone, in meetings with your staff. You are a familiar and trusted entity in your community. So that's why we wanna work with all of you because of the likelihood for greater impact. Another reason we wanna work with all of you is because of the importance of tying voting to public services. When people exercise their right to vote, those individuals have a direct say in the selection of their representatives who will make decisions on their behalf, highlighting the connection between voting and access to essential services like health care and housing and education and child care, individuals are encouraged to become more informed about political issues and participate actively in elections because the focus is on advocating for their collective interests. Voter participation, as Phyllis alluded to at the beginning, is just another way to improve quality of life. Voters tend to have strong social connections, leading to a greater quality of life and longevity because communities that vote are more likely to elect representatives that reflect the diversity and interests of their own communities. So what will it look like partnering with the Housing Alliance of PA? What will we do together? So we wanna support your efforts to register and mobilize voters. We will provide you with technical support to you and other staff about how to talk to voters about registration, what you can do as a nonprofit organization and housing authority. We'll provide you information on any changes in voter laws like mail-in ballot availability and provide regular communications on important election dates and deadlines. We'll provide one-on-one -on -one support to help you build out your organization's voter engagement plan. We'll provide materials, custom QR codes, and access to the online registration tool Turbo Votes. The custom QR codes for each organization will be could be used to link residents and clients to an online portal where they can check their registration status, update their voter registration, find out where their polling location is, and register to vote if it's their first time voting. We'll be able to provide some stipends to organizations to help you plan your events. If you're a small organization with a small operating budget, we may be able to provide some stipends. So please let us know if you're interested in exploring that. And then what I think most importantly, we'll include your organization in the outcomes analysis to highlight your work so that you can show your community, your stakeholders and your funders the good work you're doing. So what do we ask of you in return? Like Phyllis said, we really do want this to be easy for you. And we really wanna learn what activities are working to get people registered to vote and turning out to vote. And we wanna help you incorporate this into your day to day. So we ask the partners do the following. Uh, identify ways that you could provide voter registration and education materials and information to people you serve or your residents by planning and executing at least three or more voter education and registration activities. And this could be as simple as monthly emails to your residents and clients, hosting a canvassing event with your residents, setting up a table in your community space to help people check their voter registration status, handing out flyers that have important election dates and deadlines, 
Uh, some partners in previous years have helped organize rides to and from polling locations. And then we ask once you identify those education and registration activities that you complete a very brief work plan and timeline for those activities, which we will provide the template for. We ask that you utilize the online voter registration platform TurboVotes. This is very, very useful for that outcome analysis. So as I mentioned earlier, you'll receive specialized QR codes that we can put on flyers, business cards, social media posts, that when a client or resident accesses TurboVotes through your personalized QR code, that data will be tracked and we'll be able to see this organization got 30 people to register to vote. So like I said, very important for that outcome analysis. And we'll teach you how to use all of that. We want it to be really simple. And then we ask that you fill out a form, post your events to let us know what went well. Very simple, two to three minutes. How many people attended? What were some of the highlights? Do you have any pictures you can upload? Again, very helpful for tracking numbers, especially if people wanna utilize paper registration and not the online registration. And then it's just another way we can highlight the good work you're doing. And then we ask that you attend at least one meeting to talk about the work you're doing. 30 minutes with yours truly to get support, talk about challenges, talk about highlights, just to hear about what you're doing in your community. So one example of what you can do is put voter registration in what you're already doing. So are you conducting intakes for your services? Do you have a community room? You can set up a table and help people check their registration status. Or you can provide voter registration materials at an already planned community event that you plan to have a table at anyways. Oops, okay. So what can nonprofits do? The IRS affirmatively, affirmatively states that 501c3 organizations may conduct voter engagement or connect with candidates on a nonpartisan basis. We will provide one pagers and fact sheets on all of this information. They're also gonna be put into the chat and we can send them out later. We'll also talk a little bit more later on about what those permissible activities are that 501c3s can do. So what can housing authorities do? So HUD made an announcement to executive directors of housing authorities in 2022, stating that housing authorities can in fact do this work. Uh, on the screen here, you'll see some permissible activities that housing authorities can do, like providing household documentation, permitting the use of PHA community spaces to hold meetings, candidate forums, and voter registration, and then making voter registration resources available to tenants um, and running voter registration drives. Um, National Low Income Housing Coalition made a really, really helpful one pager about all of HUD's guidance for PHAs that we will put in the chat and send out later. There's also information on there to help people experiencing homelessness exercise their right to vote. There are two very useful toolkits that we will share on homeless providers helping people to vote and how to register folks to vote that don't have a permanent address. So those are just some examples of the resources that the Housing Alliance is gonna be able to provide through this initiative. And with that, I'm gonna pass it over to Lauren, who's gonna talk a little bit more about what those activities are that nonprofits can engage in. Okay, thanks, Jen. Um, so again, I'm just gonna go over some rules to keep in mind around voter engagement and education um, as we do this work. So. As a nonprofit, you can host a candidate forum, create a candidate questionnaire, um, distribute sample ballots and nonpartisan voter guides. Um, the most important thing here is staying nonpartisan, um, which I will talk about more in the next slide. Okay, so what can't nonprofits do? So nonprofits cannot endorse any specific candidate um, so that means that we cannot make any campaign contributions for or against candidates. Um, we can't rate or rank candidates based on who is favorable um, to your issue. So that might be housing. So we can't do that. 
Um, we cannot allow candidates to use facilities or resources unless they are made equally available to all candidates. Um, so basically, nonprofits can conduct any type of get out the vote activity as long as they're encouraging people to vote as opposed to encouraging people to vote for any specific person or party. And Sophia sent a link in the chat um, where you can find some more information and examples on permissible and non-permissible activities so you can reference those whenever you need to. Okay, so I am just gonna go over a couple strategies and tips for education and engagement. Um, so as Jen went over, um, building voter registration into daily activities um, can be simple. So that could be during intakes, community meetings, any client facing or community facing events um, and more. Um, it's important to set concrete and attainable goals and tie them to deadlines as we do this work. The election cycle can fly by way faster than you think it will. Um, so it always helps to have a plan um, and know when and what you're planning to carry out um, through the cycle. Next, um, another great tip is um, partnering with local institutions that have a lot of direct contact with residents or clients. Um, so that could be a library, a local farmer's market, um, or any community fair or event. Um, next, planning around civic holidays like National Voter Registration Day, National Vote Early Day um, can be really helpful. There's also, and it's very important, I want to emphasize that while we're doing voter engagement work externally, it's also important that we are encouraging our own staff to vote. So you can also engage in nonprofit staff vote um, and do that. So next, um, one really great tip is you can contact your local Center for Living and inquire what services um, they can offer folks with disabilities during the election. So that might look like practicing conversations with folks that will be working at the polling place. It can also look like practicing casting the ballot um, and any needed accommodations that people might need. Um, and again, I wanna emphasize, it, this doesn't have to be a big undertaking. It can be as simple as including voter registration information or important deadlines in your regular communications to residents. So yeah, you can go to the next slide, Jen. Okay, and here are just some really important election dates to keep in mind. So when we're talking about planning around these important deadlines, um, it's important to, yeah. <laughs> okay, on to the next one. So now um, I'm gonna pass it over to Jennifer Santiago um, from HDC Mid-Atlantic. She has been a partner in our voter engagement work for the past two election cycles. Um, and she's gonna go over what they've been doing in the past and what they're planning to do this year. Thank you. All right, thank you for having me. I just wanna start off and ask if you can hear me and if you can see my screen. Yep, we can hear you and see you. Nice. So hello, my name is Jennifer Santiago. I am a resident services manager at HDC Mid-Atlantic. Um, our home office is in Lancaster County or Lancaster City, Pennsylvania, but we have apartment communities throughout Pennsylvania, Delaware, and Maryland. Um, I have our website here if you would like to like peruse and learn a little bit more about HDC. So at HDC, we serve over 5,000 residents in 72 communities with over 3,400 apartments in Pennsylvania, Delaware, and Maryland. Uh, we are in urban, rural, and suburban areas, and our, our residents are seniors, families, and people with special needs. We are trusted resident advocates, developers, property managers, resident services, community partners, and collaborators. Our mission is to build hope and opportunity for all residents to reach their full potential by creating, preserving, and strengthening affordable housing communities. Our vision is, is for a world where a safe, welcoming, affordable place to call home is open to everyone. And we believe that housing is a human right and the cornerstone of growth and stabilities for individuals and families. And in 2019, um, HDC became committed to racial equity through our racial equity, diverse, diversity, and inclusion work. Um, at HDC, we, we know that this is a journey that we're on together and one that we recognize will never end. 
Um, and residents are in the are in the heart of that work um, and and connecting voter engagement initiatives to residents is a racial equity is racial equity work. And it, HDC um, envisions a world where a safe, affordable place, a welcoming place to call home is open to everyone. It's connected to our racial equity work and HDC will advance social advocacy and justice and racial equity, diversity and inclusion in our organization and in our communities that we serve because we believe that housing is a human right, that all people should be able to achieve their full potential in life regardless of their race, ethnicity, or the community in which they live in. So when we started our racial, our, our voter registration work, um, we started to look at some baseline information um, and educating ourselves. So the VP of Resident Services and myself um, participated in the Our Home, Our Vote sessions, and we learned so much about the why and the who is not voting um, and how to engage those, those, those folks into our voter engagement work. So we started to um, look at, again, who is not voting, and they shared this um, graph that just, for me, just foundationalized why is it important to operationalize this work um, as housing providers. And so if you can see like this blue, these blue, um, these people in the, the people in the blue and the blue boxes are renters. Um, in the black, they're homeowners. And then below it's in the blue, it's people that are living under 20K and in the black over 100K. And for me, when I'm looking at it, it's very similar, the renters and the people living in low, um, um, under $20,000. These are our residents. And for me, this is a place where I, again, I foundationalize myself in the why. It's because of the renters and because of the people that are living under these um, income restrictions. So at HDC, uh, we are a housing provider. And with that, um, we face evictions like every uh, other landlord or housing provider. And I started to think about the effects of our eviction rates and our and voter turnout. And I did some research and found that Matthew Desmond, some of you may be familiar with him. He's an author and a sociologist. He wrote Evicted. Um, he, he, at the same time, he was also thinking about evictions and voter turnout, um, serendipity there. And he worked with a other group of sociologists and they have an article called Eviction and Voter Turnout, the Political Consequences of Housing Stability. And in, in his group, um, they found that based off of their research that evictions play a powerful role in depressing the community voter turnout. Uh, with a 1% increase in evictions, it predicts a 47% drop in voter turnout. So in his article, he talks about why, why it happens. And there's three high-level points. Um, and, and he talks about the depletion of social cohesion in neighborhoods when people are being evicted, the residential churn in communities, um, and that that's connected to the um, the weakening power of political participation. He also talks about studies that residents that are in um, communities that are highly policed often view the government negatively. And there is research that shows that people, um, communities that are heavy, highly policed are low income, um, um, black and Hispanic communities. And he also noted the material hardship and the renter priorities. And voting may not be a high priority when people are trying to survive rather than thrive in their, in their communities and in their homes. So there are three recommendations that they shared. One is investing in interventions aimed at reducing evictions. And at HDC, we offer um, an eviction prevention program to residents that they are voluntarily can participate in, but that offer them some extra support um, in them creating their own action plan. So it's resident driven. Um, so I'm excited to hear that PA Housing Alliance has an eviction prevention toolkit. I want to look through that later on. Um, the other recommendation is to remove barriers to ballot boxes. And then the last one is focus voter mobilization and grassroots efforts in neighborhoods affected by evictions. 
So why does it matter? Why does it matter for service providers and housing providers? Voting um, benefits our residents' social, co social connections and personal agency. Their voices are often left out of policy decisions that impact their lives and ability to thrive. They're demonstrating that our community is active in voting, it strengthens our influence and advocacy efforts. And we have a responsibility to promote a diverse, equitable, and inclusive democracy. So what can housing providers do? Jen and Laura shared lots of um, ideas and tips already. Again, I'm super excited to participate this year again. Um, but Theodore Roosevelt says, do what you can with what you have where you are. And that resonates with me because where we you know where do we go from here and what is important and, and you know having to decipher which what where do we start right so something that H HDC started with is education so educating our staff educating our residents on the importance of voting um, and the history of voting. Um, address verification. Some folks come in and they they move into our apartment communities and typically sometimes they forget to like update their address and update their IDs. Um, so supporting them and offering them information on how to do that or offering them, you know, like the tools to be able to do that for themselves and offering residents accessibility to information, whether that's dates of when to vote, um, the early voting days, um, the times to vote, uh, where to vote, the actual forms themselves, um, offering residents different ways that they can register to vote. So, you know, doing QR codes, having it online on their phones or having actual paper forms. And where do they drop their forms off, offering them that information? Community space, so creating community um, spaces if you have availability to do so. Um, outdoor space, indoor space for voter registration drives, town halls. Um, some of our, I think we have one property that is a voting um, poll site. So seeing if one of your communities um, can qualify to be a site. And then service integration. So what are you doing already and how can you input voter registration work? So at HDC, uh, we started our voter engagement in 2020 or 2021. And the reason I don't remember that is because I try hard not to remember it. Um, our first year was not, um, it was very low level. Um, there was very low engagement, both from the staff and the residents. And part of that is because we did not have partners and we did not know where to start. Um, so, you know, when we first started, we created toolkits and emailed them to community managers and coordinators and asked them to post the information. Um, and then we quickly learned afterwards when we did a survey of how that experience was that the staff, they wanted more education. They wanted to know the why. Why is it important for us as housing providers to provide residents with the information to vote? Um, they wanted to know how to do it, how to have a conversation with residents, how to remain nonpartisan. That was that was the biggest, um, I would say, themes that I found in, in when we surveyed our, our staff. Um, so we started off with um, offering a voter equity training um, to all of our staff members, and that was virtual, um, as well as logistics and nonpartisan training to our community managers and our resident service coordinators. And, it, and earlier I said that my, um, the VP of Resident Services and myself participated in, in the Our Home, Our Vote sessions, extremely helpful. Um, and then we offered what, what we were learning through emails. So understanding that not everybody could attend those learning opportunities. So making sure that um, our staff um, had that information in emails and then we um, shared what we were learning through like LinkedIn or Facebook. We offered our residents uh, voter registration drives and we partnered with local organizations. Uh, our biggest partner was League of Women Voters in Berks and Lancaster counties, as well as our local YWCA. So the League of Women Voters, voters in Lancaster County, they focused on our county work, whereas the local Lancaster City YWCA focused on all of our city properties. 
and the League of Women Voters um, focused in Berks County at all of the um, county and city properties. And we included our, um, res our, excuse me, we included our voter registration work in our service delivery approach. So making sure that it was accessible to residents in their move-in and recertification um, timestamps. And in order to, to know whether or not residents received that information, voter registration forms were added on the sign off that residents have to sign um, saying that they receive you know, X papers. Um, so voter registration was included in that process. We included it in, in our um, direct service with our resident services coordinators through our intakes, when they're moving in, um, when they're coming in for a service. And part of their training was not just asking, do you want to register to vote? Um, but, you know, more questions around, like, do you know where your polling site is? Do you know when the date is? You know, what's important to you when you vote, having those conversations? Um, offering information dissemination in our newsletters, in our common spaces, making sure that those forms and everything is in common spaces so that folks don't have to wait until you're in the office, but they can grab it on their way in and out um, and, and guest. Um, and we highlight the National Voter Registration Day. And so I want to like go over here to the left. Um, these are our voter registration drives, a few of them. As you can see, most of them are senior residents. And that is um, because we registered 200 residents in Berks and Lancaster County, which is a huge amount. Um, and most of those residents were senior residents. So we have um, this resident here holding up the um, I registered to vote sign. And that was somebody that I specifically helped register to vote. And throughout her um, living at our apartment community, she was working with uh, Lloyd Smucker's office for her um, um, immigration status. And she was not able to vote because of that. And so once she uh, became a citizen of the United States, she came to my office dancing and she said, all right, come on, I'm ready to vote. I'm ready to register to vote. And so I'm like, okay, we pull out the forms, we fill it out together. And she um, begins to tell me that she's never voted. And I asked her, um, you know, in her country where of origin, if she ever participated in voting. And she became very emotional and said, you know, in Cuba, we were not ever allowed to vote. And so I said, oh, yeah, that is right. Um, and so just sitting in that space with her, honoring her past um, and honoring her present and her excitement for her future in voting uh, was a, a, an amazing experience as a service coordinator. Uh, so, yeah, she walks out of my office dancing and in the hallway there back here is a lobby area. And so as she's dancing, <laughs> residents are asking her why she's dancing. And she says, you know, I registered to vote. And I, I just sit back in my office and I'm just listening in on the conversation of the spark of conversation that happened about registering a vote and about the importance of voting. And I just, I had, you know, I did not try to interact at all in that, in that moment, but I was just, you know, a fly on the wall and it was nice to experience that. So I wanted to share that with all of you. That's always a moment where I feel like there was so much impact in that. Um, Jen talked a lot about our HUD and affordable housing, so um, restrictions or rules, and I, so I won't touch on that anymore, but we learned about that as well, because we're some of our properties are HUD. And so earlier I talked about understanding the history of voting, um, and that is important to know where we where we started and where we currently are and what the milestones are. So if you would like, there's a link here that has a timeline that I always appreciate to ground myself and remember where, where we started. Um, and here are some resources and tools. Um, Jen, I'm sure has these listed as well. Something that something that we did was because we had properties in Delaware and Maryland, we had to create QR codes for those states um, specifically. But what something else that we um, 
included in the information were uh, steps or instructions on how to access a QR code. So that's just a, a tip. Uh, not everybody is familiar with QR codes and how to use them. So if you would like to connect with me, here is my information. Um, and if you would like to consider making a gift to HTC, uh, here is a QR code that you can <laughs> that you can utilize to do so. Thank you for your time, and I appreciate being here. Thank you so much for sharing all that, Jennifer. And I love the story you shared. That is just one really, really important way to highlight why this type of engagement is so, so important for the work that we do. Um, all of the links that Jennifer had in her slides will be shared out after the presentation along with her slides. Um, and with that, I'm gonna share my screen again. So Lauren can tell us how you all can participate. All right, so if you have um, any questions or you want more information about partnering with us in this initiative, you can go ahead and email me at lauren at housingalliancepa.org um, and I'll be able to answer those questions as soon as I can. Otherwise, your organization um, can fill out the interest survey, which we'll be sending out after the webinar today. Um, yeah, fill out that survey and we'll be picking our cohort shortly. So yeah, I'm gonna pass it back to Jen for the Q&A. Thank you so much, Lauren. Yeah, please reach out if you have any questions, if you're interested but aren't sure, need more information, we're here to help answer those questions. And like Lauren said, a survey will be sent out after the webinar to try to gauge who's interested and what kind of voter engagement activities your organization would like to be involved in so that we can figure out what resources would be best for your organization. And with that, we're gonna open this up for Q&A. Please put your questions in the chat, I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, okay, we do have a question from, oh, I just had it from Betty Johnson. I've heard you mention nonprofits and housing authorities. Are you also interested in working with property managers that work for companies that are not nonprofits or are you more interested in nonprofits? We are interested in working with everybody. So if your organization is a nonprofit, property manager, we are also interested in working with you to help get your tenants registered to vote. Okay. We have another question from Joe. This question is for you, Jennifer, other Jennifer, not me, Jennifer Santiago. Um, have you found that people are just kind of down on voting and don't think it really matters? If so, how do you address that? Definitely. Um, so many people have feel that sting. Um, how we addressed it, because we wanted to be very careful, we're a nonprofit as well as, you know, HUD and affordable housing, um, to remain nonpartisan as possible. Um, not to share your opinion at all with the resident. Um, and earlier in the presentation, Jen or Lauren showed a graphic of what is important for you. Um, that is what we trained our coordinators to show um, when they would have those conversations. Um, I'm thinking specifically, we had a resident, we had a voter registration drive and the resident was going back and forth with the um, registers <laughs> and they were having a good conversation of, and he talked about how he did not trust the government and she pulled because I provided them with all of those tools as well. She, she pulled out that graphic and asked what's important to you in here and he pointed to all the ones and she said, well, you know, I can't force you to vote um, or participate, but think about these things when you are. So I hope that That's answers great. your question. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, if you need any more clarification, Joe, please let us know. But thank you for that answer, Jennifer. Uh, we do have another question from Lance. Uh, you're asking partners to use an online tool to track voter registration. Can you just explain how it works? Absolutely. Thank you for that question. So our national partner, National Low Income Housing Coalition, has access to a site called Turbo Votes. And on that site, it's kind of like if you've ever heard of Rock the Vote 
or if you register to vote through the uh, PA government website, it's just like that. It's just a different platform. And what we're asking partners to do is use that website to register folks that are comfortable registering online. Of course, you can still use paper. Um, and then from that TurboVote site, we'll give every partner site a QR code and a personalized link. And so every single time a person uses that link through TurboVotes to register, that data is getting tracked on the back end of TurboVotes so that we're able to see, okay, HDC Mid-Atlantic got 35 people to register throughout their three community events this summer. Um, so yeah, it should be very easy to use. You don't have to use it exclusively. You can still use paper to register folks to vote. I know a lot of folks are still more comfortable doing that, but it is just another option. Do we have any other questions? While we wait for some folks to maybe put some questions in the chat or the Q&A, just want to say thank you for attending. We will be sending out all the links, presentation, and recording of this webinar afterwards, along with that interest survey. It's pretty short. Um, and then if you have any questions, please reach out to us. We are always happy to answer those. It doesn't look like we have any more questions. So thank you everybody for taking the time to be with us today. We really hope you consider joining our initiative. Um, I know we're really excited for the possibility of working with you all. Uh, so take care, be safe and well, and reach out if we can do anything. Bye everyone.